Um, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is A Weapons, Midlife Music. Shouts out to the almighty LDBC. Go to ldbcsports.com where you can register, make a profile, interact with the brothers and sisters of the LDBC. Also, go to trilltalk.net where you can hear sports talk, social commentary. You can pick up some LDBC merch there as well. Um, lastly, go to my first home because my second home is tickettvmedia.com. But my first home is A Weaponry on Shopify.com. Um, there you can pick up my merch. Um, you can pick up the brand that I'm pushing that Prince Poe is helping out with. And that's called Relentless Aggression. Um, you can pick up Drew Titan merch. You can pick up um, BFTB merch. And you can also pick up um, my boy Pitbull the Bobby, but Pitbull the Bodyguard. Um, he's Wack 100's Bodyguard. You can pick up his merch there on the site as well. Um, this will be the only non-music related video that I'll put on my Midlife Music page. Um, as soon as my A Weapons page goes back up, <clears throat> I'll also put a similar video up. But like I said, as far as my brand is concerned i'm gonna to try to keep my stuff music related i'm gonna try not to get into you know gossiping and all that other stuff because i noticed that i slowly was becoming that so i had to take all that stuff down um this is a open letter to dante williams aka dante's boxer nation listen bro um i'm appealing to you you know as far as your manhood because anything else really doesn't matter. But I'm going to appeal to you as far as your manhood. Now, about a year ago, maybe a little a little less than a year ago, you had put one of one of our boys personal name, address and everything out there for everybody to see. Because he had, you know, said during like a presser, you know, he went to, you know, to go to the um one of the boxing events and they were rejecting him and he and he said new media so instantly you started bombasting everybody now the funny thing about this dante is that you waited until you moved to thailand to do that so that means that you can't even stand on anything that you say or be accounted for anything that you say because you in thailand so, and I, I got to say what 78 said, this was, this is how you felt all along. This is how you felt all along. I, I don't get it because to me, it's like you could have pulled Duke to the side or, you know, phone call, whatever, and just said, yo, you blowing up my spot. If you blow up my spot. I'm not going to be able to get um, credentials to the fight because they're going to be affiliating me with you. And that means that I won't get any more press passes. You could have done that behind the scenes. You could have easily done that. But no, you're going to sit up here and put this dude's business out there. His address and everything. You know, bro, that's wrong. That's wrong. You don't do that. You pull that man to the side and have a private conversation. Whenever 7-8 has an issue with anybody, the first thing that he does is try to have a private conversation. Now, if that goes awry and you decide that you want to air out everything, then he goes public with it. But the first thing that he does, he has a behind the scenes conversation. Do you know how many arguments that the LDBC have amongst each other? But it's always behind the scenes. It's never out there in front of everybody. You could have just handled it that way. And then you got to look at it this way too, Dante. People are always looking for a way to make blacks fight each other. Because if you, because if blacks are fight each other, fighting each other, we're going to be too busy seeing the real play. We're going to be too busy to see the real play that you know that the powers that be are doing we're going to be too busy because we're going to be too busy thinking about dumb shit 
So like I said, you should have just pulled that guy to the side, called him up, emailed him, and had a private conversation. You could have done that. Now, do I think Duke was wrong for what he did? Yeah, he was wrong for what he did, but he didn't mean no harm. He wasn't thinking about anything malicious. He wasn't. So you could have just gave him a call and say, yo, look, dog, you blown up my spot. You could have done that. So to me, it's like this is what you were thinking about all along. This is how you thought all along about the LDBC. This is how you thought all along about 7-8. You don't like them. Let's just be honest. And then, like I said, you waited to go to Thailand to do that? Come on, bro. You wrong. And then your recent LDBC, you know, situation, you bring up ego. Number one, Ego is not LDBC. Fred from Barbershop Conversations is not LDBC. I am LDBC. So, what are we talking about here? What are you doing? What are you doing? And Ego, yeah, he's a little weird. Yeah, he's a little weird. But he doesn't bother anybody. He doesn't bother anybody. The only time that ego even, like, you know, in my mind, like, you know, the radar came up a little bit, was the time that he used to hang out with Troy King. And ego and um, K-Ho kind of got into it. But that was it. That was it. And shouts out to Troy King and Aaron Cole. Salute to y'all brothers, man. I got love for y'all. I got genuine love for y'all. Troy King is one of the funniest dudes ever. He is he is mad entertaining. So salute to him. And salute to Aaron Cole. I, I think those brothers provided so much entertainment on Ego's channel back then. Um, But that was the only time that ego was even having an issue with the ldbc but other than that ego doesn't bother anybody he doesn't bother anybody so i don't know why you're sitting over here pressing ego about using the word new media and he was with you for a minute and let me